A stress strain curve can tell stretchiness, elasticity, strength, stiffness, flexibility, ductility, brittleness, toughness, strain energy also called as resilience of a material. This simple curve tells it all, but we don't know how to read it. I will tell you how to do so. We have been told with a lot of wrong information about materials since years and we have accepted it as truth. This video will clear all the concepts and cover all misconceptions and I will tell you how to identify material properties just by looking at stress strain curve of it. So let's untangle in this video. Let's start with first misconception. One stress strain curve for each material. Well, there are actually two graphs for each material. One is for tensile stress and other is for compressive strength. The curve might look same to see, but values at different points are different. Think it this way, do you really think that the compressive strength of a brick would be same as of its tensile strength? If you don't, then make sure you subscribe to the channel as we keep bringing on this kind of science every week. The stress is force upon area. It is indicated on vertical axis, while strain is change in length upon original length and it is indicated on the horizontal axis. The values of each material for compressive and tensile stress differ, but the curve to look and reading the graph is same. So let's first see what each section of the graph represents. The first straight line indicates the elastic property of material. This line is straight because the stress is proportional to strain within elastic limit also called Young's modulus. At any point on this line, if you remove the applied force, the material will regain its original shape and size. If furthermore the stress is applied, then a curve is stressed like this. Now here the stress is no more proportional to strain. If you remove the force now, the material will try to regain its original shape and size, but it won't regain it completely and some permanent change in shape would occur. Now, without removing force, if you continue applying stress, the material will start going plastic deformation, which means permanent change in shape. And if you remove force now, it won't try to regain its original shape back again. Rather, it will stay in that extended form or compressed form if it is compressive force. And this deformation will be forever. This curve goes like this. It is harder to apply stress at first but in the latter form, the material loses its strength and further straining it becomes more easier. Then finally, at the end of this curve, the material breaks. So moving on to first two properties, elasticity and stretchiness. Well, I have actually already made a video on this topic and it has a detailed description of it. So you can check out the link at the end of this video and at the top of it. I will explain this in short in this video. Elasticity is the property of material to regain its original shape and size after deforming force is removed. And stretchiness is the property of material to stretch easily and regain its original shape and size when the force is removed. To see on graph, steel looks like this while rubber looks like this. Looking at the definition of elasticity, material is more elastic if it can handle more deforming force and still can regain its original shape and size when the force is removed as force relates to stress. Hence, material having this point of elasticity higher on the graph is said to have more elasticity. Coming to rubber, it is said to be more stretchy as it can undergo lot of strain and still is able to regain its originals. So don't confuse elasticity with stretchiness. Elasticity is about how higher the point of elasticity can go. So steel is more elastic than rubber. But rubber is more stretchier than steel as it can strain a lot, even with small force. Let's come to next properties, ductility. Ductility is a measure of material's ability to undergo significant plastic deformation before it ruptures, means fractures or get broken into pieces. Also, there is one more definition of ductility, which is ductility is the property of material to get drawn into thin wires by application of force. All this basically means this curve of plastic deformation should be long on the horizontal axis. Longer the curve, more the material is said to be ductile. Here I want to clarify one thing that this curve basically indicates plastic deformation. So if you are considering tensile force or stress, consider it as ductility, while for compressive force, 
consider it as maniability. If you see it for steel or plastic, both of them have long curve which means it has lot of ductility and maniability. That's why deep drawing or extrusion and making cables out of this material is very common and very easy. There's one fun fact. One gram of gold can be so ductile that you can draw it up to 2.4 kilometers of long length wire. This video is getting pretty long, so I'll continue it in the next part. Don't forget to share, like and comment on this video. Next part will appear on the screen and if it hasn't yet, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll get notified each time we post a new interesting video. As a for now, I'm signing off and see you guys next week.